Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Dharna Noor, joining you from Baltimore. The Bulletin of Atomic Scientists moved the hands of their symbolic doomsday clock 30 seconds closer to midnight on Thursday, a warning of increasing global peril caused by the threats of nuclear weapons and unchecked climate change. The setting has not been this close to midnight since 1953, when the Soviet Union exploded a hydrogen bomb, triggering the nuclear arms race. Here's David Titley of the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. The current political situation in the United States is of particular concern. The Trump administration needs to state clearly and unequivocally that it accepts climate change caused by human activity. The doomsday clock movement is decided by a board of prominent, preeminent global security and scientific experts, which includes 15 Nobel laureates. This comes just after government agencies NASA and NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, confirmed that 2016 was the hottest year on record, continuing a decades-long warming trend that is a result of human-caused greenhouse gas emissions into the Earth's atmosphere. This is also the first time that three consecutive years, 2014, 2015, and now 2016, each broke global temperature records. To discuss this existential threat caused by climate change, we're joined by Dr. Michael E. Mann. Michael is the Distinguished Professor and the Director of the Earth System Science Center at Penn State University and the author of the book, The Hockey Stick and the Climate Wars. His latest book, co-authored with Tom Tolles, is called The Madhouse Effect, How Climate Change Denial is Threatening Our Planet, Destroying Our Politics, and Driving Us Crazy. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Mann. Uh, thank you. Great to be with you. So one of the things that the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists cited as a great concern, as they put it, is uh, a growing disregard of the scientific expertise, uh, expertise that's needed when it comes to responding to pressing global challenges, including climate change. Uh, they say there is a troubling uh, propensity to discount or outright reject expert advice uh, related to international security, including the conclusions of intelligence experts. Uh, we've seen in week one of President Trump's administration here in the U.S., which appears to be a muzzling of climate scientists with ver a veritable gag order for the EPA and some other governmental agencies, as well as the threat of uh, purging of the governmental uh, collected scientific data. Um, so can you talk about the dangers of attacking or silencing uh, climate scientists and eliminating this data? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you heard earlier from David Titley, uh, former Rear Admiral in the Navy, a colleague of mine here at Penn State. He now directs the Center for Climate and uh, Weather Risk at Penn State University, and he's one of the leading experts in that area. And what uh, David and other national security experts are telling us is that climate change represents one of the great national security threats that we face as a nation in the years ahead because it leads to increased competition for food and water and land uh, among a growing uh, global population and it exacer exacerbates existing tensions and so uh, it, it couldn't be more dangerous literally from a national security standpoint to have an incoming administration that is rejecting uh, what scientists have to say, what national security experts have to say about the risks of climate change, even to the point, as you allude to, of censoring uh, data and findings from government scientists that aren't convenient to the powerful vested interests, the fossil fuel interests who appear, appear to be running the show now with this incoming administration. And many headlines uh, detailing the, the 30 seconds uh, move closer to midnight by the doomsday clock scientists uh, indicate that this greater risk that we face is largely due to the Trump administration. Um, so talk a little bit more about what's at risk here. Uh, what's on the line uh, under Donald Trump? Yeah, I mean, the, the risks are that if we don't act uh, to avert catastrophic climate change, then uh, we are, you know, we're, we're facing um, uh, fundamental challenges uh, to uh, our, you know, continued uh, flourishing as a civilization. And so to have an administration now in control of um, you know, one of the world's two largest emitters of carbon, the two largest emitters of carbon are the U.S. and China. And under the Obama administration, um, uh, they engaged in a bilateral treaty to uh, reduce their carbon uh, emissions. China is making good on their commitment, but now we have the U.S. threatening to go back on their commitment. And without uh, the U.S. as an active partner in this global effort to, uh, to, to limit carbon emissions uh, to avert catastrophic climate change, without the U.S. acting as a good faith uh, partner in these global efforts, it's going to make the challenge, an already uphill challenge, 
even greater. And so it literally does. The, the, the fact that um, the incoming administration wants to go back on our commitments um, to the rest of the world when it comes to reducing carbon emissions, wants to undo the progress of the previous administration um, in terms of the gains that we've made in lowering our carbon footprint, in incentivizing uh, clean renewable energy, uh, to have an administration that wants to throw all that out and now instead provide all of the subsidies and incentives to the fossil fuel industry um, that has created this problem in the first place, obviously it represents a challenge to the global effort to avoid catastrophic climate change. And, uh, and tying into NASA and NOAA's recent findings as well, uh, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists report that, and this is a quote, uh, the continued warming of the world measured in 2016 underscores one clear fact. Nothing is fundamentally amiss with scientific understanding of climate physics. Uh, this builds on what you've just said. So does the continued rise in global temperature confirm the UN's and the IPCC's, that's uh, the Inter Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, and others' findings? Uh, and explain why the bulletin says it's so clear that warming is so connected to human activity. Yeah, well, I'll give you an example because we've actually done a calculation. Um, a calculation of the likelihood of three consecutive record-breaking years like we've seen now with 2014, 2015, and 2016. Um, in the absence of human-caused climate change, um, if it were just the random dice of, of weather and natural climate variability, that sort of event, three consecutive record-breakers, should be a one-in-a-million event. Um, and what the warming of the planet has done is taken uh, an event like that that should be a one in a million event and turned it into a you know one in ten event uh, the sort of event that we expect to happen over the course of a decade or so and, and so that's what we've seen the warming of the planet has fundamentally changed it's it's loaded uh, the the random dice of weather and climate towards having more and more of these record-breaking years here in the u.s. we had the second warmest year on record uh, we had widespread uh, unprecedented heat uh, major heat waves um, these impacts aren't subtle we're seeing the impacts of the excessive heat uh, the more frequent uh, flooding events because of a warmer atmosphere that can hold more uh, more uh, moisture. Um, the, the two strongest hurricanes in either hemisphere happened over the last year. Um, we are seeing the impacts of that warming, of our alteration of the climate in terms of extremely damaging extreme weather events. Uh, as I like to say, the effects of climate change are no longer subtle. Uh, you don't have to tease them out with clever statistical tools. We can see the impacts of climate change now playing out on the 24-hour news cycle with our very own eyes. Talk about what the U.S. could do. Talk about uh, what you'd like to see from, uh, for instance, the U.S. federal government in the face of this uh, catastrophic climate change. Yeah, I mean, what we really need uh, at the uh, federal level is the sort of commitment that the previous administration showed uh, towards engaging with our international partners in combating this problem. Uh, now we have uh, an executive uh, branch, uh, incoming administration, that has appointed climate change deniers to key posts that basically has the fossil fuel industry now running uh, our government. Um, and so it's unlikely that we're going to see progress at the national level. Uh, congressional Republicans have shown that they are completely unwilling to uh, act to do something about this problem. So what that means is that we are going to need to see action at the grassroots level, at the local level, at the state level. And fortunately, that's happening. Um, if you looked at California, uh, they are a shining example of how you can grow your economy um, on renewable energy, incentivize renewable energy, shift away from fossil fuels, and have unprecedented economic growth. California and, and their governor, Jerry Brown, uh, is leading the way and demonstrating to the rest of the country that if you really want to have a flourishing economy, you have to embrace the, the, the great economic revolution of this century, the rest of the world recognizes that the 21st century is going to be all about the revolution of renewable energy. And those countries that are jumping on board, those states that are jumping on board are prospering. The rest of us are falling behind. But you've got California, you've got the West Coast states who have joined together in a consortium to incentivize renewable energy, to put a price on carbon emissions. You've got the New England states who have formed a consortium to do that. 
if you total up the people who live in those states, it's about 30% of the population. So even in the absence of, of leadership at the national level, um, there is still a groundwell of support for moving away from fossil fuels uh, towards renewable energy. That's the direction that the world is going. And uh, those states that recognize that have uh, an opportunity to be part of that. Those states uh, that refuse to act are going to fall behind. Dr. Mann, I'd like to thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you. Always a pleasure. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.